way to reclaim clay it takes a couple of towels and some kind of large plastic container it doesn't need to be this big but some kind of bin with a lid that fits on there pretty well um, that is kind of the magic of this what happens is you put pieces of clay in there that are not quite all the way dry and not quite all the way wet as we showed in our first example but the moisture that we put in the towels and then leave in this container will actually cause this clay to pull moisture into itself and make it like fresh new clay. So now I have a really old bag of clay that I love and it got too dry and it's too large for me to want to break it apart and try to <clears throat> kind of dry it out and make it slurry, which is a, the technique I'm going to show in the next part of this video. Um, I just want this to be a fully fresh, nice bag of clay again. So what I did is I've got a towel on the bottom underneath here. If you can see that. Okay. And I've got a towel that I'm going to put on the top here. Okay. I want to make sure that that towel covers most of it. And you can do this for other pieces of clay. It does not need to be like one big chunk of clay like this. If you've got a bag of clay that halfway dried out and it's just like fist sized lumps, or an old project that um, you want to make into new clay. It just got kind of partially dried out. You can do it this way. It's really great. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take some water, some nice clean water, and we're just going to kind of saturate that towel and pour enough on there that it gets the towel underneath wet too. So if it's sitting in a little puddle of water, that's fine. That's kind of what we want to have happen. Okay, don't need to fill up the tub or anything. Just make sure that the towels are nice and wet. Okay, and then go ahead and put the lid on there. And then put that away. It usually takes a few days for bigger pieces of clay. It can take about a week. But you should be able to um, open it up, take the towels off of there, and it'll be just like fresh, moist clay. And... Um, when it's ready to come out, I will show you that. Okay, so now we're back with our block of clay that we've revived by pouring water on towels and sealing it in a bin. And we can see, I already cut into it a little bit, just make sure it was okay, but we can go ahead and do a couple more cuts. You can see that has gone from an immobile block of clay that was too leather hard to a nice usable chunk of clay. So I'm going to take those chunks of clay and I'm going to put them back in a bag and wrap it up. And you can see how well that worked. That was just under the towels for about four days. Uh, for smaller chunks of clay, you can probably get away with fewer days. For a bigger piece like this, it took a little longer. Say we've got a large amount of clay that is already kind of gotten beyond weather hard, worked on a lot of little pieces, kind of difficult to use the other two techniques on there. Um, right now this is going to be kind of like a large version of the way that we make slips. So we're going to take these scraps of clay and we're just going to dry them all the way out. So I'm going to put them on a surface where they won't be in my way and I can dry them out. So these are pieces I carved off of something that was already leather hard. So these pieces are fairly hard. I could put them in a bin and do the towel method on them, but there's so many little pieces like this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to basically make a gigantic batch <coughs> of slurry, kind of the same way that we make our slip, just on a larger scale. So I'm taking these pieces out where they can dry. And you're going to need to have a big bowl or a paint bucket or something like that that you can reconstitute a fair amount. So a bigger container than we use for our slip. Some of these are already dry. Some of them are still a little wet. But I'm just going to put them all together. Spread them out. I'll have room to do all of this. So I'll do as much as I can. 
Right, so if you have a lot of shavings from wheel throwing, this is also a technique that you can use. Just dry out your shavings, leave them out on a board somewhere. Yeah, it's really great to do if you've got sunshine. You can just dry things out in an hour. Of course, our weather is not that great, but it's got a well, floor heater, register, kind of wall heater, something that's kind of nice, gentle heat. You can sit this in front of it on something that won't scorch. Um, so you don't want to put it on paper or cardboard or stuff like that because um, if the clay heats up too much, it can scorch the surface it's on. But if you've got a piece of wood or a plate or a tray of metal, those are all really ideal. So we're going to put this aside right now and let these dry and when we pick up again, we'll show how to reconstitute it. And here I have the dried chunks of the dark brown clay that I'm going to put into our now emptied bin. Carefully dump those in. Not that these pieces are dry, they're going to be pretty dusty. So try to do this in a ventilated area, someplace outside if you can. Okay, so now I'm going to put enough water on there to just cover that. And I'm going to need to go outside with the hose, so we're going to take a little trip. Okay. Take our bin of clay here. Okay. I'm going to put just enough water in there to just cover it just a little bit. Just enough that the clay is just showing above the surface of the water. Okay. So we're going to let that dry clay soak up the water. Okay. You can go ahead and you can cover that. You can leave it uncovered. I'll just cover it because it'll keep debris out of it as I'm working on other projects in here. If you have animals or small children or other curious beings in your life, you may want to have a cover on your clay. So we'll let that sit probably for a day and that water is going to soak up into the dry clay and we'll have kind of a slurry and I can show you how to reclaim that. Okay, so you're ready now to reclaim the slurry that we've made here. I'm going to mix that up a little bit and this does require somewhat of a surface that's going to need to be dry and sheltered in order to dry your clay. What I have here is a very thick piece of wood. Something else you can also use is a dry piece of concrete. You've got access to something like that. Um, if you have a piece of plaster, you can use that to lay it on there. Um, if all else fails, you can get um, kind of a you have a one inch board or something and lay some fabric across it like a pillowcase. This is that's also a good way. Mostly what you want to do is take this um, paste and you're going to lay it out on the surface. And we're going to let that set up and dry. Kind of depends on the weather and what kind of surface you're using. But you want to make sure you don't go thinner than an inch. But you don't really want this to get too thick or else the air won't circulate through it and get it dry. So I'm just taking out small handfuls, keeping it kind of controlled. Just get a lot of movement if I was messy or got out too much at once. So the point of this is to get the clay dry enough that you'll be able to uh, remove it from the surface. It should start to peel up. You'll see it sort of dry enough at the edges it'll start to lift up from the surface that you've got it dried on and that is when you can test it and see if it's still too sticky to roll into a ball and reclaim and wedge. Uh, sometimes you have to flip it. it just kind of depends. 
if it's rainy weather like we're having now, it could take longer. If it's super warm weather later on, um, you have to keep an eye on it. It could take very little time. You might even have to wrap it in plastic while the surface that you put the clay on just sucks the moisture out of there. Just depends on the humidity. If there's too much moisture in the air, it'll slow down the evaporation process on the clay. But this will reclaim a lot of clay scrap. I'll get more than a couple pounds out of this. You don't need to take the water out of there. You can mix up the slurry that's left in there and have it just be slip. I'm just taking the large kind of smushy chunks. <clears throat> Laying that out in a nice even square. Hopefully you can see that. Not letting it get too thick. And you'll see it start to go from shiny. The surface will get a little more dull. And that's probably when it's good to kind of come over and test it with your fingers. See if it lifts off the surface. It looks like it's visibly peeling at the edges. If so, you may want to um, see how much you can lift off of there. And maybe flip it over if it seems like it's getting dry on the bottom and it's still really wet on top. My studio, I do have a bit of a floor heater going, so that sometimes move your clay along. Just want to be really careful you don't put your clay on anything that can scorch or melt. So if you are going to try to cheat and warm your clay enough to get it moving along a little faster, um, you want to make sure you put it on something that is not Tupperware or Sterilite or rubber or something like that that can melt. Um, anything like heavy paper, like cardboard, you don't want to put that in front of a heater. You want to make sure it's something metal or ceramic. Even wood is okay, but you just want to make sure your clay doesn't get so hot that it scorches the wood. Okay, so I'll clean out the rest of that. Use that for slip. Okay.